Hey guys, Tim McCamus back to do a little more fabricating. We've touched base on quite a few things, but uh, now that we've talked about tubing and fitting and weld setup and welder settings, tungsten, sharpening, welding rod, we've touched on a lot of stuff. We are ready to tack some tubes together. I'm going to go over a couple of few little minor details that you need to think about when you're ready to tack some stuff up. So we just got a few sample pieces here that we've notched. It's, it's important to have a nice tight fit when you're TIG welding this stuff together. If you're, if you're MIG welding, you don't have to have as nice of a fit because you got a little more filler going in there, but you want to have a nice fit on this stuff when you put it together. And um, one of the keys that uh, a lot of people miss is um, the tubes need to be vented when you're putting a chassis together, or when you're putting any kind of a structure together that's going to be TIG welded. Because uh, as you're welding, you're going to get uh, pressure built up inside this tube. And if you don't vent the tube properly, um, it's going to blow back out on you when you try to close that weld up. So as you come around, it'll be fine until you come around to the very last uh, portion when you're trying to tie that weld together. And uh, it's, it's just as you get done to close that weld seam up, it's going to blow out on you and it's going to blow a hole in the tube and it's going to blow shit everywhere. It's going to blow stuff on your tungsten and it's going to make your weld look like crap. You want to make sure that all of the tubing is vented, even the smallest tube, especially the smaller tubes. I mean, but it doesn't matter if it's inch and five eighths or it's quarter inch, needs to have a vent hole in it. So an eighth inch is what we use. We use an eighth inch drill bit to vent all of our tubes. And we vent everything under the tube so you don't have a bunch of holes in the chassis. Now, if, uh, if you want to look like some idiot, you can drill the tubes on the outside and vent it that way, but that's absolutely disgusting. So. Um, so let's say this tube is going to fit right here. We'll just take and pop an eighth inch hole in it. And, and it all goes back to the, there's tubes on the chassis that are, that are going to be open on the end. Um, for instance, like the rear cross member, uh, the, the, you know, the parachute uh, tube in the back. A lot of them are open on the end. So you want to basically route your, your venting holes all back to them. So as you're building the chassis and you're putting it together, um, let's say this is the rear cross and we're going to stand the main hoop up here. Let's, let's put a vent hole here and one on the other side. And now any tube that we vent to the main hoop will then vent back out of this. So as you go down and every tube should have a, a vent hole built on the back side of it, uh, drilled into the opposing tube. Um, like I said, even if it's small, like a quarter inch or three eighths, figure out where that thing's going to go, mark it with a marker or a scribe and then just poke a hole in there and then cover that up with that tube. So make sure that you vent this stuff because it will destroy your weld at the end. And you can't close it back up. Once you found a tube that doesn't have a vent hole in it and, you, and you, you're trying to close that weld up, no matter what you do, it just keeps boiling back up and pushing that out of there. So you've got to have that thing vented. Another thing that's important to do is have your tube clean. Um, a lot of this 4130 comes with uh, different you know finishes so you can see this is kind of uh doesn't have as much on it as this tube that's just difference in the manufacturer but uh we like to take a little scotch bright and just clean that off wherever we're going to weld that to to get that that coating off the outside um so that when we weld that we'll have a nice clean surface to weld to instead of back down here where it's not contaminated but it just doesn't produce as nice of a weld when it's got this darker finish on it so even this tube here we've taken and wrapped the scotch right around it and these these notched ends too we've wrapped around there with some scotch bright just to clean them up and make the the weld surface uh, as pure as possible same thing with your uh, welding rod if it's laying around on a greasy table or it's it's been laying around uh, let's say it's laying it's in your garage and uh, it's got a little humidity, it's got some surface rust on it, um, you'll want to clean that off. You don't, don't want to, if it's got too much on it, just throw the shit away and get some new. But uh, you don't want the, um, the rod contaminated either. So we've got clean tungsten, clean pure welding rod, and a clean welding surface. So <clears throat> the next step is uh, we've got the, uh, the welder is on and uh, we've got everything set. We've got sharp tungsten in here and we're ready to tack some parts together. So 
tacking is is as important as welding because a a crappy tack like a a big blob of tack on there is just going to make your weld bead look bad because you've got to you've got to weld over that tack so as you um as you put the chassis together or, or the or the wheelie bar kit or the rear end housing or whatever you're doing and you tack this stuff together you need to think about how you're going to weld it because you'd like to put your tack um, in a place that's appropriate for flowing the weld around the tube and what i'm talking about here is nobody can weld this stuff 360 degrees around it without stopping it's just impossible you're out of position all the time so for instance uh welding this particular tube here if i'm welding it on the table i might weld up to here and then i might flip that around and get down in this corner here and start and weld back up to here so that means i'm going to have a start and stop point right here that's where i want to put my tack i also can put my tack here or here because I'll quarter tack this, I'll tack it in four places, and that way I can start where my tack is and pull it up to this tack, and then this one here I might even just flow on around and go back down that way, depending on where I'm at on the table and how out of position I can be. But uh, think about where you're going to put your tack. So, for instance, don't put it right here. So if you put a big old gob tack right here, then when you come around and weld this now, you've got to weld over the top of that and your bead is gonna look like it's got a hump in it. So you wanna put that tack here, approximately where you're gonna stop at so that I can get down in here and pull that around and weld right up to that or maybe go past it a little bit. So a nice small tack is all you need to hold this stuff together, okay? You don't need a big tack. And the, these little tacks, if they've got a little rod in them, if you're just fusion tacking it like a little zip, they're not very strong. So a little bit of rod on it and a little small flat tack will make your weld look so much better when you get ready to put it together. I'm gonna tack a few of these things together, just kind of show you what, what we're gonna do with that later on. So since I'm doing this myself, I'm just gonna zip tack this right here. Okay, so all I did was just zap the pedal so that uh, because I'm holding it myself, so I don't want it to uh, roll away. So I just hit the pedal with a lot of heat and it just burned that tip in there, but it's flat. It's so welding over that's going to be really easy. So then if I go back to this side, I'm going to want to put a tack on there that's uh, a little bit uh, more substantial, but I'm going to use some rod. And so notice I'm keeping the, uh, the cup on that even after I've welded and letting that argon flow on that because it cools the weld down properly and it should have that nice nickel color to it. So uh, if, I just, uh, if I just go out here and... and then I just pull away from it, See the difference in it? See the difference in the heat around there and how the weld is gray and it's got a little dimple in the center of it because I just pulled away. And so I'll go right next to that one and I'll do that again. And see it's got like a shiny nickel color to it instead of that gray blob which is just a lot of excess heat because you didn't leave the shielding gas on it long enough so it should look like that it should look like this kind of shiny and clear and you see you don't see any discoloration in the tubing around it even right here where i was welding on it so um that's a nice tack right there that that's uh that will do everything you want it to do so if i were welding this tube on the table now um i would uh to keep it from pulling, I'd want to put another tack on it right here. And you see how the color is good on it. And then, so now I'm tacked, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to, um, 
I'm gonna, if I'm gonna weld this, I'm gonna start down in here in this corner because welding it this way is, is really hard. You're gonna have to, you, you wanna be in front. So you wanna have your, your tungsten coming at you and you wanna dip your rod as you go like this. Just come along here and dip and puddle that all the way off to the end. So, so I, wanna, I wanna start this here and then, and a lot of times depending on what I'm welding, I'll, I wanna make sure my hand is gonna flow the right way. So I'll just kind of quickly just make sure that I'm not gonna get into a bind rather than starting off the weld. And once I get up here, I'm out of position. So I might roll this around and take this up here and then go, okay, well, I'm not really comfortable with that. So I'm gonna put the cord on the inside of my arm here and roll it around like this and stop it up here. And then this piece here, I'll flip that around. I'll start it down here in the corner and then I'll come up here to the top. So tacking is, uh, is very important because it's the start of what's gonna happen later on in the weld. And if your tacks are all gross and nasty, um, that's the way your weld's going to look. So um, it's important to make sure that you have a nice fit. And when you have a nice fit on the tube, tacking becomes very easy. If you have a, uh, a gap, if you don't have a nice fit, then tacking becomes more of a chore and making the weld um, is, it's going to get, it's going to get a lot of heat in it. So for instance, if I tack this and I have, you know, if I've got a fit like this, when, when I go to try to weld this together here, I'm gonna have to pour a lot of rod in there to fill that gap up, and I'm gonna have to get a lot of heat in that joint right there. So um, a fit that's nice and tight, take your time, make your fit nice, and your, uh, your tack and your, your weld quality will look so much better. We're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna run just a little short bead here. just to, So if I was welding this, on the table where you can flop it around is, is different, but let's say it's on the, the jig and it's, it's, it's clamped down tight. This tube is coming off at this angle, so I don't have any choice to do this or do this. You know, I've got, a, I've got it here. So then I'm gonna decide how am, I, how am I gonna get to that. So, you know, I might start here in this corner and I might pull this on around here like this. And then this one here, I might actually come from here up and then from here down and then get around the back side of this and, and pull it down back to that point. So if this was locked down, I would definitely start here in this corner because in a, in a tight fit, it's, it's easier to start in the tight corner and come out of it than it is to start on the flat and go into the tight corner because you're, you're going to get blinded in there by the cup and stuff. So it's, it's easier to get in here and start that weld in that tight corner and pull it out of there than it is to come around here and try to work it into that corner. So uh, a lot of tubes on the chassis are like this. Uh, a lot of them are even some more severe angle. So you have to kind of get down in there and pull that tungsten out even a little farther and get it started and then work your way around. And with these big cups, you don't have to really stop and push your tungsten back in. You can just roll this around and keep that argon cloud on top of there and then finish that weld out. Well, I'm going to do a short little weld and leave the gas on it and then I'm going to pull the cup away and show you what it looks like once the weld gets too hot. Okay, so I started down in this corner and I just pulled this up out of there and I've got a nice color to the well. There's no, not much heat in the tube. I you know, got good penetration and uh, the weld, you know, see every time you see one of those little overlaps, that's a dip of the rod. It's got a, it's got really good um, color to it and I'm going to finish this off here. I'm going to, can start here and continue on down to here, but I'm going to pull off of that 
and not let it uh, post flow on top of that and show you the difference in that weld and how much hotter it is. So you can see the difference in that. This, this started out and I, I let plenty of argon flow over that and I got some nice color in it, but I started right here and as I was welding, when I finished, I just pulled away and see how much more heat is in that tube and how gray that, that weld is. That's it's pulling a lot of base material up into that. And you know, even though the weld still is sufficient and structurally it's gonna be fine, it's, um, it's just hotter than it needs to be for this wall thickness of tubing. I mean, this is the type of weld we're looking for here, this kind of rainbow nickel color. And this grayish color is always what you get when the weld is too hot and you're not getting enough argon flow over it. So again, it, it just takes some practice, but uh, argon is really important in keeping the good cloud coverage over that weld. And you can just see, even though I continued on, so this tube was hot already, um, but this would have looked identical had I let the argon flow back over it. So I can continue on from here and pick that up and wrap that around and then leave the argon over it and get back to that shiny color. So an another thing that's important too is your, is your weld size and the, and the s sides of your bead. So you need to keep a consistent distance with your tungsten and you need to watch your, um, your puddle because this tube, um, as, as it's notched, uh, it is thinner on the side here. Okay, so, so down here in this corner, the, the tube is thick because the notch is almost straight. But see, as you just the way the notcher is fit, as you come up around this corner and you start to get here on the ends, right on this little corner as it starts to turn, that tube is cut back at a taper like that. So out here where you're welding on it, it's thinner than it is here. So you can apply a lot more heat in this area, but when you come around here to this point, naturally you'll just have to back off on some of that heat. Otherwise, you'll start burning this tip away. And you'll see it start falling away in the, in the puddle, and you'll have to push some more rod in there to get the weld back up. But as you come up this ramp and start to roll around this point, this just naturally is a much thinner material. So your heat, the same heat, is going to be much more penetrating in this area. And then as you wrap back around here, see you're getting thicker again, so it's going to be cooler. So it's really important to watch it because it's easy to burn these away. And once it starts burning away, if it starts cutting back in there, you've got to pour some rod to it. Well, then what happens is, is you, your weld is, let's say, you know, right here we're 3 16 wide or so. And then you'll get up here and you might be like 3 8 wide because you're trying to pour so much rod in there to keep that, that tip from burning. Another thing you can do is kind of point your tungsten away from that and don't let it burn into that tip too bad. But you really, at this point, you've got to work with your rod. You've got to put enough rod in there to keep a nice puddle to keep the temperature down and keep that puddle flowing around that space right there so that it doesn't burn that away. And that just makes, because, you, you know, as, as you wrap this full tube, you would really like that weld to be the same size all the way around, not thin here in the corner and then thick here and then thin back around the other corner. So, again, that's a little bit of uh, basics on this, and uh, I'm going to uh, stop with this, and, and we'll, uh, we'll pick this up, and I'll show you a little bit more uh, advanced uh, stuff with the welding. But this will get you started, and uh, if you can, you know, even if you can't quite make this right out of the gate, if you just keep a nice consistent weld bead there and don't let it get too hot, um, you're gonna be fine. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next episode.